Hi, boys and girls, it's Pastor Angela. Hey, I thought that I could read you a book today, so I hope that you are ready to get comfortable and enjoy a really great story. You know, I was thinking about this book from a different angle. I was thinking about when I was a little girl, um, how there were some things about me that I didn't necessarily like. For instance, I didn't like the shape of my ears. People would make fun of my ears. They would call me Dumbo the Elephant, or they would call me an elf, like Santa's elf. And so because of that, I would never wear my hair up. Or when I was in fourth grade, I played soccer, just on a fun league. I made a mistake in a game. I reached down and picked up a soccer ball with my hands, and some friends on my team were really, really mean, and I found out they weren't friends at all and I didn't play soccer anymore after that. Well, I guess I did in high school, but my team never won a single game and I just played for fun, just because I liked the sport. Uh, but here's the thing, God didn't design me to play sports. He didn't design me to be great at sports. He designed me for other things. And so if we choose to live our lives trying to live up to the standards everyone else has set for us, then we will miss our own purpose. Did you know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made? Boys and girls, that means that God designed every part of you exactly the way he wanted it designed. And so there's nothing about you that needs to be changed. It doesn't matter what the world tells you, what your friends tell you, what neighbors tell you, what mean people tell you. There is not a thing about you that needs to change because God made you special just the way you are. You know, today's book is actually not a Bible story. It's one of my favorite stories, and it's about a character by the name of Penduli. Now, Penduli is a story by Janelle Cannon, and in this story, you're going to meet Penduli, who is a special little character who tries to live up to what everyone else thinks he should become. He's not happy with himself. And this story is pretty funny in helping him discover his own purpose. I hope that you enjoy it. The sun was low in the East African sky. The animals had been sleeping all through the hot afternoon and now they began to stir. Penduli awoke before Mama Hyena, eager to explore. Don't go far, Mama yawned. We must hunt soon. There has been so little to eat lately that we'll need all night to find enough to fill our bellies. Penduli promised to stay close and trotted away. Isn't he cute? As Penduli passed the waterhole, she spied sleepy animals in the brush. She sniffed the air, which was rich with exquisite and mysterious smells. But something was not so exquisite or mysterious. It was the smell of dog. Penduli's sharp ears picked up the soft pounding of pads on the dirt. She spotted a pack of wild dogs at play on a faraway ridge, and then they saw her. The leader dashed towards Penduli. The others trailed behind and yelled, Watch out, dog! It's a hyena! Just a shrimpy one, dog scoffed, coming closer. If it didn't have all that stripy fur, those ears would make me think it was a baby elephant. The pack erupted into wheezing laughter and galumphed away, tongues lolling. Penduli had never given a thought to her ears. Were they really so big? She let them fall flat against her head. Plip, flop. I can hardly hear now, Penduli thought, but she kept her ears down. Ahem, a rumbling voice came from the scrub. Ahem, Penduli whirled around. A lion! The little hyena poofed her mane and suddenly looked twice her size. She was sure that she was mighty fierce. 
But Lion just calmly looked her up and down. Then he leaned his old scarred face nearer and said, that prickly fringe hardly becomes you, young lady. He's talking about that fur along her back that stands up, kind of looks like a skunk on here. Pendulee's mane flopped as she hurried away. She had never given a thought to her coat. Was it really so straggly? Pendulee circled back to the water hole, waded into the pool, and let the water soak into her fur. She figured that when the water ran off, her coat would lie flat. No more prickly fringe. Zebra and two friends strolled over, their brown eyes glinting at the sight of the soggy little hyena. Pinduli didn't like their amused look. She tried to lower herself deeper into the water and disappear, but she was too late. You see her in the water? She's trying to be sneaky. If you're going to do stripes, please, please, please work on your symmetry and clarity. Good grooming and not soaking will take some of that unpleasant haziness out of your patterns, Winnie the Zebra. Then the three tossed their heads, dipped their lips into the water, and drank. That mean old zebra. Pinduli splashed past the startled zebras and escaped to a quiet spot. Were her stripes really so disorderly? Didn't Mama Hyena always say she was the most beautiful hyena ever? She rolled and rolled in the pale dust, which stuck to her wet fur. Soon, her soft stripes had completely vanished. Ears pinned, coat flattened, and dusted to a pallid gray, Pinduli wanted nothing more than to get home, hoping no one would notice her. I'm really in trouble now, she worried. I've been gone a long time and Mama gets awful cranky when she's hungry. That doesn't look like Pinduli at all, does it? As she headed back to the rocky den, she saw lion, zebra, and dog, along with his rowdy pals hanging around the water hole. A few wildebeests were there too for an evening drink. My, it's busy out here tonight, thought Pinduli, edging away from the others. No luck, the animals turned to see who was coming. Their jaws dropped, their eyes bulged. Pinduli looked around wildly. What did they see? What do you think they saw? A ghost, the animals screamed. An evil spirit is upon us. They jumped and ran. Where, where, cried Pinduli as she raced behind them. Feet pounded and dust flew and no one answered. The terrified crowd tore through the thorny brush over craggy stone and horrified found themselves at a dead end in the small canyon. They screeched to a halt, huddling closely as they turned to face their worst fear. Dog was the first to speak. Oh, great spirit, he howled. You've come for me, I know it, because I've made fun of young hyena's ears. All eyes were on Pinduli. Ah, so I'm the ghost, she thought. I'd better get in character before they recognize me. Go on, dog, said Pinduli in a slow, deep voice. The spirits want to know why you would commit such a hideous, awful, atrocious crime. Dog's voice quavered. Uh -uh. I don't know, I guess I was still mad at Finnick Fox for calling me Butterfly Head. Lion joined in. Please spare us your wrath. I too have spread discord by insulting a young hyena's mane. But Vulture called my own mane a mange. Pinduli nodded sagely. 
Sagely means wisely, like he knows everything. Zebra stomped her hoof. Owl told me that my stripes were garish. A tear rolled down her long face. Everyone fell silent. Panduli's mind whirled as she tried to think of what a ghostly spirit might say. Of course, spirits always give tasks and want offerings. She thought, hmm, let's see. Okay, Mama will love this. In order to appease bad spirits, you must find your tormentors and make peace, Pindoli called out with an authority. And always leave a bit of every meal as an offering. If you do this, I shall never return. She turned and glided away on her tiptoes, trying not to smile. Thank you, thank you, called the creatures. We will do as you say. Once out of sight, Pinduli raced home. There you are, cried Mama Hyena as Pinduli galloped up to her. You look awful. Pinduli was so glad to be home again. It was worth getting in trouble. She didn't even mind the five baths it took to get the dirt out of her fur. In fact, it took all night to get Pinduli looking like a beautiful hyena again. I was worried sick. I went looking everywhere for you, said Mama Hyena as she helped smooth Pinduli's coat. Now that you're all straightened up, we've got to go out and find something to eat. It's already morning and I'm sure you are as ravenous as I am. Ravenous means very hungry, like starving. Pinduli's stomach growled. That very morning, dog, lion, and zebra searched the wide savanna until they found fennec fox, vulture, and owl. We have come here on the order of the great spirit, Dog announced. We must find out why you were so rude to us. Finnick Fox spoke up. I guess I was having a bad day. Serval Cat said, I look like a fuzzy bat without wings. He nodded to Dog. Your ears really aren't so bad. Vulture ducked his bald head. Marabou Stork called me Moonscape. So I got mad and made fun of Lion. Owl moaned. Adder said, my feathery stripes look more like scribbles. Let's go find those three and get to the bottom of this, said Dog. The oddball crab went searching and found Serval, Marabou, and Adder. We've come here on the order of the Great Spirit, they declared. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble for laughing at owl stripes, hissed Adder. Miss Zebra, do you remember when I said your stripes were dull, mumbled Zebra? Marabou stepped forward on his stilt-like legs. Lion told me that the glare of the sun on my head hurt his eyes. Sorry, grumbled the big bald cat. Then Dog blurted, oh dear, Serval, please forgive me. Serval's amber eyes squinted at Dog. You mean for the time you said that the wind might pick me up by my giant ears and blow me away, he said. Yep, dog yipped. Who am I to be talking about ears, he pranced about, flopping his big ears like the wings of a butterfly. Serval burst out laughing, and everyone, including dog, joined in. From that day on, things began to change for Pinduli and her mother. Instead of spending hours hungrily scrounging for meagre, meal, meagre meals, they found delicious treats everywhere. Look again, eggs, fish, fruit, it's a miracle, exclaimed Mama. As Pinduli tasted the sweet berry, she said, the great spirit must be smiling upon us. Mama Hyena looked at her grinning daughter. Wait a minute, did you have something to do with this? Laughing and feasting, Pinduli told the whole story. You're not only the most beautiful hyena ever, said Mama, you're the smartest hyena ever. Great story, right? Thanks for joining me today. 
Come back tomorrow for another great story. Story time with Pastor Angela. Love you guys. Bye.